look at this. You try this. You look at that. Try yeah. that. Uh, uh, yes. Try this, my friend. Uh, that's uh, Shane's telling us about Syrian food that he uh, enjoys here in town. What's the name of the restaurant? Oh God, Aspasia. It's basically uh, where Gr- is it? Grant and Country Club. It used to be a Mediterranean spot, and then it was a Mexican spot called Ahuna. Went out of business, but the Aspasia, it is delicious. It's very, very good. You I, had me at their hummus. The way you talked about the hummus, yeah, yeah, bro. I, I could bathe in that hummus. It's the best <laughs> stuff I've ever had. That's gonna be the new trend now: people bathing in hummus <laughs> for health reasons. I mean, I love all that stuff, right? Oh, I love yeah. the Greek. I love uh, what is it? Uh, what do they call it? it? It got famous after the Avengers. Um, where God, what's the name of that food? Shawarma. <laughs> Oh, shawarma. Oh, dude, shawarma's great. Does it have shawarma? Is it Syrian like that? No, no, I don't know if they have shawarma. It's mostly like, you know, it's basically... Uh, Is that baklava? A lot, yeah, baklava, but a lot of meat, hummus, falafel, all that kind of stuff. Which they is like kind of Greek. Like I was telling uh, Rico here, they do these uh, pickles that they make inside of there too, and they are they're really, really, really good. You know what's funny is I, I actually made pickles this week. Really? Made homemade pickles. Yeah. And the reason why I did was because I have this meal kit that I forget to f- cancel every yeah. couple of weeks. And <laughs> I'll just get this box just, uh, dropped off on my doorstep. And it had uh, recipes for pickles. And I'm like, sure enough, I had That's a pickle awesome. cucumber in there. I sliced it up. I did it. Uh, and I had a burger on Sunday with some pickles. I'm like, yeah, there you go. look at me. Wow. Chef Boyard D. How much of their business model is just relying on people forgetting that they have it? I know. Well, that's like, oh, true. Yeah. Rock 1 2.1 KF, man. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. We started the podcast broadcast as we have Shane from Tucson Games and Gadgets uh, still hanging out with us. In a little bit, we're going to have uh, Kate from All In for Autism joining us, uh, giving us a rundown of their spectacular event that they're hosting here soon. Uh, but first, speaking of events, Amazon Prime keeps messing around on the drop date that they're going to release uh, Fallout. Yeah. Fallout is the much anticipated series based off the video game uh, directed by the creators of Westworld. Now, Herb Stratford was talking about the first two episodes that he saw and how spectacular this show was. Yeah. Amazon was initially going to drop those two episodes on the 11th, 11th correct? Uh, 12th originally, and then the 11th. And now I believe, from what I read this morning, if it's correct, they're going to drop all eight episodes on Wednesday, the 10th. Okay, so that tomorrow Damn. is going to be Fallout Day. Apparently. And what is Tucson Games and Gadgets doing to celebrate the release of Fallout? Well, you know, we had planned on Friday, as it was originally <laughs> uh, stated. So on Friday, I am hosting a Fallout Trivia. That's going to be a fun time. Uh, you know, uh, it's going to be for, for, for hardcore Fallout fans. You know, we don't make the trivia easy. So yeah. uh, that's going to be really cool. Um, afterwards, we are having a watch party as well. So we'll all watch the first episode. And uh, we also have... Uh, Arizona's uh, largest uh, Fallout cosplay group is coming, so there should be some power armor. It's so funny and, uh, that there's a group like for that. everything, right? There so, is now. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So you were able to find them on social media? You're like, hey, we're doing Fallout. Let's uh, reach my, out to Arizona's my, largest. My event guy took care of it. I'm pretty sure he probably did. You know, like uh, just like when we do the thing in May for Star Wars, we get the Saber Fighting Gill and the 501st generally and, and things like that. But there are, you know, there's the Raccoon City cop guys. There's the Ghostbusters. That's so crazy. Yeah. There's, you're right. I mean, if Pockets you are in, it, yeah, it's, it's a deal nowadays. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah. we got to start one, Rico. What's something that we could like uh, be fanatical about where we start our own group and be the largest group or whatever? Professional Vapors Association. No, no, no. See, that's not, that has nothing to do with sci-fi, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, robot smoking yeah okay um, well i'll get back to you on that okay but thanks <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely a hypothetical that we're looking yeah. into so yeah. yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty stoked about it it's gonna be a fun time so uh you know stuff like that always turns out do you do uh, craft cocktails or, or drinks yeah. when it comes to uh, every trivia yeah. every single one we do one for the trivia uh, i mean ghostbusters was a couple weeks ago they did ectoplasm or whatever yeah, you so know. Yeah, some green so, yeah we always we always make a theme drink for every trivia basically i don't know what they're working on for fallout but uh i don't know should be called a stem pack or something like that maybe. yeah, we'll yeah. Oh, that's gonna be awesome uh, so uh, of course that's happening again uh, tomorrow then or nope. are you still friday. Thursday? we're doing a oh, friday. friday okay friday night that's when our trivia night is it's when it was like i said it was originally supposed to drop on friday yeah so it still works for us i feel like uh i almost like a watch party being better a day or two after because most a lot of big fans are going to want to watch like myself i'm yeah. going to want to watch the show I'm going to tell my, you know, girlfriend to get the hell out of the room. Yeah. I want everybody out. I just want to watch it in its entirety, and then I'll watch it with other people and bullshit 
oh yeah yeah that's and, okay. you know, bs about it uh yeah, yeah. you mm-hmm. know after we're all together so yeah uh, well I, that makes sense yeah you want to watch it uh you know, basically where it's quiet so you got all the little easter eggs and and you're following the story and then you can do the rewatch exactly. at uh, tucson games and gadgets friday night along with other people who are fanatical about the project as well yeah play some trivia win some prizes yeah we are. have some drinks that's at the short rest tavern this friday tucson games and gadgets you can get information and their event calendar at tucson games and gadgets.com uh and don't forget there are three locations the outlet mall the park place mall and of course the tucson mall which has short rest tavern shane awesome thank you so much for yeah. coming in as always we're going to keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast youtube.com slash be vegan all in for autism and kate is coming in next and we're gonna have manny and dave joining us uh to i guess retail war stories rico you brought the six pack of coolers. I got my manliest right. listeners in studio to make us feel like a couple femboys. Is, can I say that on the air? Should you I just did? Damn it! All right, don't fancy me. I talk on two point one cafe. Man. Did I? Yeah, was that offensive? I think it might be. Who cares? Anyway, <laughs> um, what's that John Cena show that you like? A uh, peacemaker. Would you make a peacemaker oh, it's guild? So good. Oh yes. There you go. Thank you so good yes let's do that that's your show not mine that's why you said rico what's ours i'm like i don't know what do i watch that you watch whoa, 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 it doesn't matter. i would do a shogun one it's just about dressing up and you or know it's peace if it's if it's if it's peacemaker i want to be the fucking what's the guy who wears all black who's just like the younger guy who on the peacemaker yeah oh shit like the assassin guy or yes. like whatever he's like young and just like some stupid young guy but he's always all in black and yes he comes it, and saves his ass once or twice super nerdy though yes <laughs> super funny what dude i haven't watched it that in show minute. is great it is a great did show. you watch that prime movie with john cena that ricky yes ricky yeah, it was okay yeah, yeah, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, it was a campy rated uh yeah. comedy. Yeah, Andrew was- Santino, who we're giving out tickets for, was in it too. And uh I was surprised to see Zach Efron doing this kind of movie, you yeah. know. But yeah, yeah Cena's funny. a likable guy, but I'll tell you what, I mean, he was just at WrestleMania, yeah, and he continues to look more and more like Ernest. So, like, I know he stays in incredible shape, uh, but it, it just uh he's just looking goofier and goofier. You right. know, like his face. cartoon character. My dad made us watch so much Ernest, dude, and then he loved him Ernest. so much. And so because of that, I, I can't help it. I have a little soft spot for Ernest. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty pissed about how they did his his son because his son looks and sounds exactly like him, and he wanted to take on the roles and continue it. And they were like, no, they just won't let him. Oh. And they, they, really? Yeah. Yeah, because I feel some bad for the generation that doesn't know Ernest. the goddamn rights. And yeah. they're still, supposedly, they're still looking for somebody new to do them. And it's like, why? And then why wouldn't you just sold it to this guy? It's got to be money. Yeah, dude. It's got to be the money thing. Of course it's money, but who's making earnest money in Nobody 2024? Earnest money. Yeah, exactly. You got to bring no earnest, earnest money back. anymore. Earnest scared of technology. Right, earnest boys, scared. All right. Later. All right, thanks, Shane. Appreciate you, dude. All right, so uh, earlier this morning, Rico did a fantastic five-star review. We're going to have uh, Kate and the crew in for All In for Autism, and then Manny and uh, Dave Redbeard is going to be joining us on the podcast broadcast as well. Uh, but in case you missed the five-star review, you're in luck because it went a little something like that. one KF, man. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. As you know by now, my good friend Rico likes to go out to different businesses around town, and when he has a pleasurable experience, he immediately rushes to Google Reviews to share his thoughts with the world, and that's what this is right now. It's uh, Rico's five-star review. Which uh, place did you give a review at this week? Went to a little place called Einstein's Bagels. I love that place. 1303 East University. University Boulevard. Yeah, let me hear all about Einstein Bagel. Here's a uh, Rico's five star review. Go for it. In the middle of my daily existential panic drive, I had a sudden and heavy bagel hankering. Oh, yes. It dawned on me that Tucson isn't much of a bagel town, and that's a darn shame. Yeah, it is. Don't get me wrong, chain bagels are still bagels, and bagels are delicious. <laughs> bagels are like the responsible cousins of donuts. Bagels went to law and doctor school while donuts just stream on Twitch all day and watch YouTube videos on flipping houses. Facts. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> As I was pulling into the Einstein parking lot, I noticed a lot of people with goofy looking sunglasses congregating and looking up at the sun. My first thought was that they were just tourists from Seattle who have no idea what vitamin D is and are just dumb apes figuring out what the sun is for the first time. Uh-huh. No biggie. As I was waiting in line, I do what I always do obviously impede on other people's business with no regard for social norms and trying to make whatever they're talking about about me. (laughs) There was a couple in front of me and the guy said something like, yeah, it's supposed to peak around 1120, but it won't be a full eclipse here in Tucson. And the girl looked at her phone and it was 1108. 
Oh, no. I butt in. Hey, did you guys hear that NASA is sending up three research rockets named APEP towards the sun for this eclipse? The girl paused and gave me funny eyes, and the guy said, yeah, I think I heard something about that. Oh. Well, did you know that Apep was the name of an ancient Egyptian deity that battled against Ra, the sun god? Pretty interesting that they're sending rockets up named after an Egyptian snake god associated with darkness and destruction, huh? Oh, Jesus. The, this... the girl went back to staring at her phone, and the guy went, yeah, that's crazy. You know what else is crazy? I don't know. That there's a comet that only comes around every 71 years, and it just so happens that it will be visible during this eclipse. Do you know what the name of that comet is? No idea. The Devil's Comet. No. Do you know what else is crazy? Oh, no. The girl looked up at her boyfriend and mumbled something about getting laid, but I just ignored it. Do you know what else is crazy? <laughs> the fact that CERN will be firing up the Large Hadron Collider today for the first time in two years. Yeah, that's a fact. What a coincidence, am I right? Did somebody say interdimensional portals? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. I, I was just having a conversation with my girlfriend, but thanks for, thanks for the info. I was able to take the hint. <laughs> well, you two enjoy your bagels, and if you want to hear about sacrificial Israeli red heifer cows, you know where to find me. <laughs> they went back to chatting and then made their MPC normie order at the counter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it was my turn. I said, listen, I don't have much time, bagel girl. A very important eclipse is happening, so just give me two untoasted everything bagels and some of that sexy strawberry schmear. <laughs> she could sense my urgency and put the order in, but then asked if I had some of those viewing glasses. She was definitely into me and concerned about my safety. Yeah, that's nice. But I wasn't here to throw the flirt dirt. I said, no glasses. You know, the elites probably just want us to get them, don't want us to get the maximum transcendent powers that would come with just raw dogging the dark sun. Oh, no. <laughs> She gave me a confused look and just I just went over and waited for my number to be called. By the time they handed me the bag, it was already 11.16, so I power walked out the doors into the parking area where all the normies were wearing their cheap Chinese-produced plastic eye shields. I gave a loud, condescending laugh and took a deep breath while looking up at, with my eyes closed. It was 11.19. Hey, man, where are the glasses? You'll get macular degeneration, dark spots, or at the very worst, blindness, said some likely optometrist in the crowd. <laughs> Not wanting to deal with any distractions with my transcendence, I compromised and I pulled out the two bagels out of my bag and placed the holes over my eyes <laughs> before opening them at 1120. That's not how that works, dude. Okay. I squinted through the bagel holes for 20 seconds while feeling the celestial powers wash over me. I could hear people whispering and speaking in complete awe as watching a mere mortal become a god is not something you see every day in a bagel establishment parking lot. <laughs> It was a little blurry, but I think I was able to make out the moon partially covering the sun. <laughs> it could have been a seed on the bagel. I don't know. But I let out a, a loud primal scream and said, I am become death, destroyer of worlds, before walking to my truck like Kratos. I had a weird headache and saw some white and black spots everywhere, but it must have been the new powers taken over. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> the bagel, per usual, was delicious. Of course. Five stars to the bagel gods. <laughs> That's an actual five-star review that you can find by searching Einstein's bagels on university, which I'm sure they're reading today being like, dear <laughs> Lord, we wish we worked at the Broadway location. Get or that actually, yeah. Schmear. yeah. <laughs> and I noticed you do have uh, actually eclipse glasses. Did you get those after the fact? Yeah, I found them on the ground. <laughs> but the future is bright, Beef. Oh, my God. So I have these ready. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, if you take anything away from this five-star review, it is not to have any small talk with Rico while you wait in line at any food establishment. <laughs> you know what else is weird? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, that's a fantastic review, Rico. Let's hit the reset. We're going to give away tickets for the Bad Friends Comedy Tour. Coming up next, the Beef Vegan Presents, so don't go away. Oh, uh, well, no. I'm saying it sounded like I'm already making things awkward. Oh, please welcome our guests back on the podcast broadcast stream. We got uh, Max and Kate from All In for Autism or Autism Society of Southern Arizona. Uh, we're going to talk about their All In for Autism event here in a little bit. And I got their website pulled up correctly. Uh, I had to really quick exit out of the other one that I put in. Uh, now I'm going to have to talk to my engineer later on. You're like, why are you searching that online? No, I, the website again and is uh, as-az.org. Okay, and that's what I got. Uh, Autism Society of Southern Arizona, uh, obviously a, a fantastic organization. Uh, been raising awareness and and uh, 
you know, proceeds, benefits, or not proceeds, benefits, but you know what I mean, uh, resources for uh, people that are living with autism and, you know, uh, people that have loved ones living with autism. Uh, so I love this. This all in for autism. Is it like a poker style event? <laughs> no, you got that question a, a lot or you, you see that because uh, it's kind of a poker reference. I'm kind of a poker dude. I was initially going to be offended if it was a poker event and you didn't ask me to participate in one way or another or run it because I'm like one of the best like uh, poker guys uh, and directors in town. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah, for another event, we can throw a poker event. Ooh. Sounds cool. You already Ooh. have the name for it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, there you go. I hadn't even thought about it. So what was the all-in for your reference? Like, why, why are you calling it all-in for autism? So the previous executive director, Bree Seward, um, mm -hmm. we were had just come out of the pandemic, and we wanted to do a fundraiser, but we still didn't know if it was safe to do a huge event. Um, so brainstorming, 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 um, all in for autism. That exact statement was basically, how are we going to raise money? And so we're asking agencies and community members and, you know, rich folk in Tucson, are uh -huh. you all in? Yeah. Are you all in, really? Because, okay, if you really are not just uh, autism aware or you're not just accepting it because you have a loved one, but if you're really wanting to help Tucson become the best place for autistic people, then how all in are you? And prove it to us, please. Oh, okay. You know, like put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> how many of them, when you ask, are you all in? They're just like, I didn't even get my whole card yet. Did anyone <laughs> respond to <with> that? Because <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if you asked me that question. I'm like, yeah, deal the cards <laughs> and we'll talk, you know? Let's go. Yeah. You're trying to bluff me already. I don't <laughs> even know if I have an ace in a hole. I know these tricks. <laughs> yeah. See, I got poker references for days. I'm just showing off the things. He so. lives on Fifth Street. <laughs> Yeah. What was what's on Fifth Street? Is there anything poker related on Fifth Street? Isn't that the poker oh, thing? you know what? It is a term. Damn it! Come on, I, son. I guess, I guess I'm the best in much. town. I'm the biggest <laughs> poker guy you'll meet. Ay, ay, ay. All right, it's been a while. I'm a little rusty, but thanks. Did you Google poker references? <laughs> That's on the top of the head, son. Oh, man. Come on. All right, all right, all right. I watch Rounders. All right. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, oh, Rounders. Cool. It's a classic. <laughs> it's now, of course, we usually deal with Bree and talk with Bree. Bree, have I met you uh, before, Kate? Have you come in before in the past? Yeah, I was the executive director last year. I came in, so we have. Yeah. Last year and a half. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Uh, and that's great. So yeah, we're going to talk about, I mean, and I participated almost each and every year, especially before pandemic, uh, when it was at like Kino and, mm -hmm. and doing the walks and, and uh, hell, I, I still recall uh, doing a walk with my daughter at the time. She's who turned 18 this year and she's graduating wow. high school. But our first walk, she was in fifth grade and uh, 11 and we did the walk. We went around a bridge and everything. And we end up doing the long walk, or whatever. She ended up throwing up. Like oh. it was, yeah, it was a walk. <laughs> and, so, uh, a walk yeah. walk. Yeah. And That's... the fact that when I had to like uh, break her heart and tell her that we didn't cure autism at the end of it. Because she's like, look, I just did all that. Is <laughs> autism done? I'm like, sorry, sweetie. You threw That's up. Not Those how that works. Terms. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> threw up. You ruined we it. We were so close. <laughs> and then you got dehydrated. So. Well, that's why we definitely wanted to not do the walk. Um, so I have two boys on the spectrum, uh, 19 and 14, and we always showed up to the the Autism Society walk uh -huh. after the walk Yeah, because <laughs> so, yeah. they were not about the walk. Um, so this year, instead of doing a walk, we really wanted to feed that that fundraising piece that people had for the walk, but we didn't want it to be just like people walking in line in the desert and right. children mm -hmm. and, you know. I mean, call the cops later to find them. Um, so we're having it indoors at the Tucson Convention Center. And instead of a walk, it's going to be a dance-a-thon. Oh, oh, nice. So, oh, okay. Um, so people oh. can dance together. They can get their craziest outfits. They can get their teams. We want it to be wild. We want it to be fun. We don't want people throwing up. So it's only going to be like <laughs> an hour of dancing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. And we're going to end it with the Cha Cha Slide. I should invite my friend, guy who dances on Congress. We had right. him in the studio. Do you know oh, who yes? he is? He's kind of a big deal. And he knows how to dance. So <laughs> the party uh, started. Yeah. In fact, yeah, as like an honorary dance floor starter, because you do, if you're getting a dance floor, it all starts with that one person to really break the ice and get people like not afraid uh, to kind of dive right in. And that's what he's known for. Right. So I'll reach out to him. Brian. Right. That'd that'd be awesome. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy who danced on Congress is uh, starting dance floors all over Southern Arizona for uh, years now. So it uh, seems like it'd be a good deal. And TCC is my home away from home. Uh, you know, I'm there all the time hosting games for the Tucson Roadrunners. So Ooh, are yeah, also going gonna... to be there. They're going to have a table at our event. too. Nice. Right? Nice. Excellent. Yeah. So my friend Dusty will be there uh, shaking tail feather. 
whatnot, <laughs> right? So nice. uh, Dusty's got some moves too. So I know. So, but so does Wilbur and Wilma. They're oh, like, also oh, be there. So, oh, so oh. we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. the, dance uh, off. Rock one, two point one KF May. Yeah, it seems like Max from uh, the Autism Society of Southern Arizona is almost throwing down the gauntlet, mm-hmm. challenging Dusty from the Tucson Roadrunners uh, to do a dance battle against Wilbur and Wilma of U of A who are going to be at the all in for autism event that's happening at the TCC. I got Max and Kate with me from uh, the autism society of Southern Arizona uh, and each and every year, this is an annual event that they put together. It's a fantastic fundraiser event uh, and the proceeds benefit those uh, living with autism, those family members who have a loved one living with autism, autism awareness, as we know, uh, you know, is a, is a growing thing here in this country and society as a whole. Uh, so getting these resources is super important. And the way that you guys do a fundraiser event is not only fun, but it's family friendly and it's it's an event to do. So when is this event happening at the TCC? Saturday, this coming Saturday, April 13th from 10 to 2. Yeah, 10 to 2 at uh, the, so, you know, and I'm, I was like, do I have hockey games there? Am I going to be there for the games already? Mm-hmm. No. Uh, I'm not. Uh, so yeah, it's it's wide open. So okay, yes, yeah. we're on the other side, we're in the grand ballroom. So it's nice and carpeted, but still inside, but not as loud. Yeah. Now we talked about this because the previous years we've done like you know walks and and you know been at Kino Stadium and and usually of course you got to deal with the elements and and people doing long walks. And I shared a story of uh, my daughter throwing up after one of those walks. <laughs> and, and, you know, so but it was still a very fun event. Uh, this is a family fun event that's going to be a danceathon uh, of sorts. Uh, how do people get involved and, and what can they expect when they come out to this event? So they can come out and there we have all sorts of entertainment. We have a reptile petting zoo, an instrument petting zoo, we have a bunch of different art stations and science stations and games. And it's all arranged within the resource fair. So parents can actually have a chance to talk to providers while their kids are making some art and doing things of that nature. And it's just going to be we have Jedi training and a bunch of different superheroes and story times with Clifford and Moana. Moana and just a lot of fun all day long. And then the dance down at the end. So it's going to be a pretty packed day. Yeah. So the dance thing happens at the end, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is I just a great family event where, you know, uh, that has a great cause behind it. So, I mean, if you're looking for something to do to come out and, you know, have fun with your kids and, and just, you know, entertain yourselves, get them entertained. Or, you know, a lot of parents out there, you want to get your kids worn down, you know, it's a loss of energy. There you know? we go. Yeah, the, I mean, that's the key to parenting right there. Like, what can my kids do throughout the day that will make them exhausted so they, they go to bed at a reasonable hour, right, and not bounce off the wall? <laughs> that's what, you know, you could do this Saturday at the TCC in the Grand Ballrooms for the Autism Society of Southern Arizona. Now, there's going to be ticket information and tickets for this event. And, mm-hmm. you know, I know you have your website, as-az.org. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I said it correctly. Good job. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much are tickets? Where can they get tickets? And can they get tickets at the door? You can get tickets at the door or you can get them online ahead of time. And tickets are $5 a person or you can buy a family pack for $20. And that's for families above four people to 10 people. Oh, nice. And yeah. So to make it affordable for everybody, we didn't want there to be barriers to anybody being able to come to hang out with us and have fun. Yeah. And also awesome. free parking. And free, free parking. parking. Thanks oh. to Riley Chevrolet. They sponsored the parking. And so we have free parking. Oh, that, no, that is That's awesome, huge, too. Yeah. yeah, because at TCC, which I love the place, but, the, you know, they make money off that parking. <laughs> and I got those new parking, uh, uh, basically, towers, lots, right, to make it super close to the venue, which is nice. You don't have to walk as far. You can park right there on site, but at the same time, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's money. It's you, not free. <laughs> yeah, you save that money, and then you could, uh, you know, uh, donate. And of course, uh, there's going to be uh, food, drinks, food and trucks, food, yeah, food trucks. trucks. We're doing a raffle there too, in addition to the um, danceathon. So if people want to get join in with that. Yeah. Too. So what's the what can we win? What can you win? We have so many prizes. They have some Kendra Scott jewelry. We got tickets to the biosphere. Tickets to the to the. Um, the place with the plants, the botanical garden. Yeah, the place with the plants. <laughs> the place with plants. Yes, and the that zoo. Place. And we have um, swim lessons at DeMont Swim School. We have but private Pilates lessons. There's like so many things. And it's nice. it's not like, oh, a dance-a-thon where you're the best dancer or you're the last dancer standing to win those prizes. Oh, well, never mind. Um, the yeah, ultimate, Rico's out. The ultimate prize, obviously, is whoever raises the most money. But we're going to have prizes for uh, best Dancing as if no one's watching award. Oh, uh, best okay. team outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Best single outfit. Um, so these are, we really just want everyone to get on the dance floor, 
connect with their bodies in a really fun way and connect to the community. Yeah, that's fantastic. And again, just a great way for the kids to go out there and, you know, uh, exert their energy and have a, just a great time in the process. Uh, 10 years as an organization that, uh, you know, uh, the Arizona Autism or the Autism of Southern Arizona have been, you know, putting in this event and, and raising awareness. And, it, you know, it gets bigger and better every year. And I'm very excited about this year as well, especially it being inside. Cause you never know with the weather and it gets warm and it's, you know, it's fickle weather here in Southern Arizona. Oh yeah. Uh, so, so many things happen. We're going to post their flyer on our social media pages as well. If you want more information, you could see all the information that you need to know about the event that's happening this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at their website, as-az.org. And again, it's a huge event from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. All in for autism, benefiting the Autism Society of Southern Arizona. Is there anything else you want to mention? Or, you know, I just want to thank you for coming in and sharing your awareness again. Thank you, too. And um, well, last thing we really do want to mention is that all of our programs that we have at the Autism Society serve everybody in the community, everyone at any True. age, and they are free. And the reason being is because of people, the community, sponsors, donors, and grants. Yeah, yeah like keep these resources flowing and just by going out and having a good time with you and your family. Exactly. And, yeah, and it benefits so many people. It's such a big, uh, you know, benefit to like this society here in Southern Arizona. Uh, so we appreciate all the great work that you guys are doing. So thank you so much, Max and Kate from Autism, uh, Autism Society of Southern Arizona. We're going to keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast, and we got more after this. Visit them online, as-az.org. It's Rock 1 2.1. Ah, got ah. that nailed so close and i did not <laughs> you, say you once. dropped it at the end they're like come on yeah yeah i did not as az.com yeah I'm no like, i never said ass.org it's uh, true. you know it was in the back of my mind it because was. that's well, just how silly i am uh, our initials are autism society of southern arizona so it's a s s a oh yeah that's true yeah. asa asa yeah, yeah way cooler than the space place <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> They're exploring your anus too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> podcasting! I'm glad that I have teenage boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go back exactly to talking about the plant right. place. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming thank in. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank uh, you. We're going to hit the reset here for you guys earlier this morning or yesterday we did. I have my life in case you miss it. One little something like this. Check it out. By your mom. Awkward. It is awkward. Did you do something that got you fired from your job? I just get stupid. It's fun being stupid. Don't hide this in vain. Let us laugh at your pain. Call 600 KFMA right away. I promise we won't embarrass you. Because Beef Vegan presents... F my life. F my life. F my life. Yes, it's time for another edition of your F my life. These are unfortunate situations. Email to me at beefvegan at kfma.com. Subject line FML. But of course, if you have an F my life you care to share on the air, you can give us a call at 600 KFMA. That's 600 5362. And if Todd and I agree your life is F, we'll hook you up with something. Because I got tons of things to give away, including passes for the Centurion and May the 4th Be With You event at the TCC, the Bad Friends comedy show that's happening April 19th at the Linda Ronstadt uh, Performance Center. And on top of that, passes for the Pima County Fair, which I know you guys want. All right. Uh, let's get into the first email that was sent to me over the weekend by Eric. Eric said, uh, hey, Beef, last week I was telling my coworker that I was considering quitting the shady Fifty Shades of Scum business that we work at. He snitched to our boss, who quickly fired me on some BS charges of incompetence, theft, and workplace bullying. I guess I'm not getting a good reference from him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, sounds complicated and layered, uh, but at the end of the day, Eric got fired prematurely. Is that not my life? No, nope. big baby. You went from not being able to claim unemployment to being able to claim unemployment. Congratulations. That is true, Eric. You can claim un unemployment now because you were fired. So I guess that was a bonus. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all the times I've been fired. I've never claimed unemployment ever, ever. Yeah. yeah. And I've been fired so many times, <laughs> including from this company. Oh, anyways. Next up, my life email said to be by Rick. Rick said, I spent all day on the toilet trying to pee. And when I did, very little would come out. I would stand up, sit on the couch and go back to the toilet. And I've been going to the bathroom. Put your lightsaber away, Todd. Gosh, you can't stop playing with that thing. You're going to go blind. <laughs> Anyways, back to Rick's email. I've been going to the bathroom around 30 times, including last night, trying to fall asleep. Worst day. Uh, uh, my dude, FML, you have kidney stones. Jesus. 
Yeah, that's a that's what that is. You have kidney stones. You're worse than WebMD as far as diagnosis. That's like super dire. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, that could be the case, and that's getting even worse. Load up on your fluids, kids, and uh, lots of water. Drink water, guys. Yeah, Drink I've, lots of water. Have you ever had kidney stones? I did. It was the worst pain I've ever experienced. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. One one kidney stone. It was just one. It was just one. Exactly as that dude described. Could not. You would get up. You would try to pee. Maybe and a little drop comes out, and that's it. And then you suffer like that, and then it hurts because it's a tiny little pointy stone that is making its way through you yes yes we know how kidney stones work how many mountain dews did you have to drink to get develop a kidney stone don't, I, don't drink g fuel kids was it g fuel, <laughs> it was g fuel. okay yeah. yeah drink water Woo. all right uh i'm not gonna win because like i don't want that to happen all right uh next up my life email sent to me by monica she said uh, over the weekend it was my 20th birthday happy birthday to me my boyfriend threw a beer can through my back windshield after breaking up with me. Jesus, that escalated <laughs> very quickly. Wow. F my life from yeah. Monica. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, kind of a little bit of both. Congratulations, you dodged a bullet, but then you caught a silver bullet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a Coors Light? Uh, all right, probably. Uh, super F my life. Stay away from that dude, Monica, and good luck. All right, uh, next F my life sent to me by Tabitha. She said, Friday night, I went to the bar with some friends. We walked in, we picked a table at uh, random in the same area as a bunch of older men. The oldest, fattest, ugliest man at the table looked over and stared at my chest. He then started motorboating the air in directions of my boobs. All right, F my life for Tabitha? Yeah, Tabitha, sorry, big FML. Yeah, I'm going to say F my life as well, Tabitha, and I'm sorry. I thought you'd enjoy that. <laughs> Stop it, me! Yeah. Stop it! I was definitely the oldest, fattest, ugliest dude <laughs> motorboating the air. What can I say? I'm a fan of big dudes. Hey, we all have our, our addictions. Yeah, all right. Final of my life of the day sent to me by Adriana. Adriana said, uh, I once was in a shower having a little fun with a detachable shower head. I didn't know hey, anyone else was home until I heard a toilet flush and scalding hot water flooded my cooch. I think I needed to go to the ER, but I was too embarrassed to ask for a ride there. Uh, I couldn't sit or walk properly for a week. F my F life. F about. F about. But did you get the finish? Uh, no? <laughs> no. All right. Double F about. All right. Keep those emails coming. Be thinking to KFMA.com. We're going to give away tickets for the Bad Friends comedy show starring Andrew Santino and Bobby Lee coming up this hour. So keep it right here. It's Rock 1 2.1. Twenty thousand, yes. twenty thousand views in less than twelve hours. I was able to clip up yesterday, so pretty productive. The, the good thing about that is uh, nobody in management or sales gives a fuck. So <laughs> that's great. Here's some fun facts too, as far as uh, working hard. And obviously, you see uh, Dave Redbeard in the building. Manny is back in action. Um, beard Bros, Beard Bros, <laughs> the Beard Bros doing Beard Bro things. Uh, let's see. Are like the YouTube page itself, which you guys are a major part of, obviously, uh, each and every day. Uh, but this is massive. Okay, so we're at uh, 1,535 subscribers on there. Nice. Now, uh, yeah, like OG uh, Manny, you were there from 100. Um, so was there from nine. We were begging. <laughs> yeah, we were begging for a thousand subscribers in December. So now it's April. We're already at 1,500. We're inching towards uh, 2,000. Uh, our 20, uh, last 28 days, and this has been kind of like consistent. We're almost at a hundred thousand views, uh, consistently, no matter the last 20 days mm -hmm. since January. So like consistently up for like 87, uh, 87.2 thousand views on the YouTube page within the last 28 days. Good. Yeah. Good and, things. Yeah, man. Just uh, you fucking grinding away. Staying busy. Keep that wheel greasy. Dropping f bombs. Now, Dave wanted to be on the podcast broadcast for a minute. Dave, what's going on? You get you coming in with segments and everything. Get that mic close to your <laughs> yeah. face. I got to train you on radio. You're not going to get nervous on me, are you? Oh no, man, I'm good. Okay, yeah, that's good. <laughs> now, have you met Manny, Manny before? No, I haven't. But uh, his beard's magnificent. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I know. Look In fact, that, actually, I brethren. do have to mention, uh, and I I've been slacking on that today, uh, but the beard envy is back. And we're gonna have Kevin Smith be a judge for that. So if you <laughs> oh, really? think, yeah, if oh, you, cool. yeah, that's gonna be Friday the nineteenth. Um, so if you want to come in an extra day, Rico, do it. 
No, I'm just nodding my head, like, likely. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I got to have famous friends come in. Uh, but, yeah, either way. Uh, yeah, so he's going to be uh, that set up in the Rustics. And, I mean, it's going to be a shit show of sorts because there's going to be so much going on. Uh, but we're also going to do our Beard Envy contest, a uh, quarterly contest, to see who has the most glorious beard in Southern Arizona. And Manny has been close. He's been the bridesmaid twice. Twice. Yeah. And is that is that heartbreaking twice. to you? Are you upset about that? You know now it's just a gimmick now. Like I just, I'll come in just to do it again so I can be second place again or something. You got a new strategy. The more you don't care, the more you're likely to win. I know. I, uh, I, that's, I, that's what I was kind of thinking. I'm just going to yeah, wake up, show up, and not even do nothing to the beard and yeah. see how it works. Well, what did you do last time? Just my normal grooming. Right, right, yeah. Uh, and, and you don't do any dye or nothing like that. That's a natural look that you got going on, right? The gray Correct. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, which is magnificent, really. Honestly, I know we're not doing the beard envy right now, but uh, I'm envious. Yeah, isn't that cool? Like he's got the gray goatee, mm-hmm. long like the waterfall cascade, <laughs> uh, just coming out the chin, right. and then everything else is still dark. And uh, when did this start developing? When I had kids. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. The older they got, the more white started showing up. <laughs> That's great, though. It's so crazy that it just grows in the middle at this point. And eventually, I'm sure it will kind of work its way around to the side, right? It's it looks like it's starting. And uh when that happens, I'm gonna do that Santa Claus bit. Oh yeah. yeah. You're be Santa Claus? Sure, why not? Yeah, nice. Now yeah. I got a question. Would the would the lawyer here at the station be mad if he did like a blackboard black beard gimmick where he had like it's lit on fire? Put fuses in. Fuses. <laughs> the well, black beard I mean, thing. yeah, I, I don't think we could do any kind of like explosions or pyrotechnics in this Damn studio. Man. What First if off, I have a certificate for pyrotechnics because <laughs> I got that. I feel like this entire room would go up in a heartbeat, you know. And this like, is so like, what happened? Blackbeard let your place on fire? Like, yeah, it's a long story. Yeah, I think this would be the worst studio in place uh, to, <laughs> for a fire to break out. I think it's the the least safe a uh, broom closet. Out of everywhere else, other studios at least they have windows kind of close by. Right, and this is like kind of windowless, and we're at like the center, so it would essentially make this whole place burn. And you know what? Another crappy thing is, uh, if a fire did break out, and I want to scare you because I wanted you to come in as much as possible, um, you know, we're least likely to survive and last to know. We we will be the last, the last to, know. to know. They would forget There's about no us in a heartbeat. There's no alarms, nothing. Nothing. This is not even supposed to be a studio, <laughs> yeah. you know. So literally a broom closet. Yeah, I don't have any phone lines, any hotlines <laughs> where people could reach me. Uh, yeah. So it would just kind of be like, oh yeah, you were in there. Oh kind man, I forgot. Uh, I know. I know. Well. Now both of you guys are veterans. Uh, Manny was a Marine. Uh, Dave, what were you again? I was in the Army. You were and in the Army. If yeah. I would have known he was a Marine. I would have brought some crayons. But oh, crayons. here we go. Oh. Yeah, Ooh, they love it. But I want a good, want, clean fight. When we go to war, they praise it like the Mona Lisa. So, it's all right. <laughs> and then Dave, you want to get close to that microphone, okay? Oh, you want to speak into the tip. I know it's a uh, tips yeah. in the mouth. You know? I get it. Yeah, if people get a little worried that it's a little ditty, but you know, the closest <laughs> that you get uh, to it, the better. Uh, and then ten, real quick on the stream, I saw that you're on that 420 show, uh, and unfortunately, obviously, I'm not going to be hosting that show because. Uh, I'll be doing the last regular season game for the Tucson Roadrunners that what? night. Uh, but I will make my way over and hopefully catch your set uh, before the night is over. So uh, they did ask me to do that. My former GM is putting together that show, the 420, the great oh, nice. 420 Fest is what he's calling it. Boom. Which I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't like that name. <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I used to do like 420 is my radio uh, anniversary, right? Mm. So I used to do a, a, an annual music festival, a rock local type music festival that we called Focella, uh, which is, you know, not faux like the food, faux like the fake, right? And also it was up in Phoenix, so had a Phoenix connection to it. And I've been seeing uh, those flyers pop up on my Facebook memories. And uh, and the lineups I had were sick, dude. And a lot of the usual suspects that people you've seen on the show. Uh, but I would pack out the sail in in Tempe. And, and get like fifteen hundred, yeah, uh, dude. yeah. So it would. I would do two stages, live broadcasts, food trucks, and this is all self-produced, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the most important part is bands got paid, uh, and that's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, it would be an all-day night uh, event. Uh, I would be fucking wrecked by the end of it, <laughs> but it would just be a blast, dude. And we would pack it out, and there'd be so much love and community there. And that was our response to uh, saying F the corporate radio system, right? 
And unfortunately, CLN uh, ended up going away. And then that was a I, good venue. That was probably my favorite in Tempe. Yeah. So if I was to do another Focello, which I would love to do another Focello, or Focello like a rock local festival, just best of the best bands. Uh, I, I could only do it at uh, Club Congress, I would assume. No, oh, go to the Slaughterhouse. The Slaughterhouse? Well, see, this was, here's the thing with the Slaughterhouse, Dave, is that I would have to bring in my staging. I had to bring in my sound, everything else. So you're talking like when you're uh, putting on uh, and promoting events, producing events, oh, yeah. you got to think of the resources that are there. So if I was at Hotel Congress, outdoor stage would be the bigger bands. Uh, Club Congress in, it would be the smaller baby bands. They're all like locked in with sound. And so the cost and everything is already low dough. Built in. Yeah. Um, and I would love to do that as far as a replacement for KFMA Day. But again, uh, you know, I'm out of the loop when it comes to all that stuff. Uh, it's so, your field of dreams now. Right. You just have to keep manifesting. If you build it. Then uh, I hate to do this to, to you, Ten. <laughs> ten ten's like, breaking well, news. You're doing this event. You're doing that event. June 8th sounds like a Mexico weekend to me. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, so tentatively... I'll pencil you in, but I don't know if I'll be in Mexico. I don't know what the deal is. If you guys want to come join me in Mexico, right? I'm just saying. Rock One Two Point One KF May. Welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. Uh, joining us in studio on a podcast broadcast, we got OG streamer number one Manny, Woo! and we got Dave a Red Beard. What Red Beard uh, joining us as well. Now, they're both vets, okay? Now, Manny represents the Marines, and Dave represents the Army. Uh, and how many years did you serve in the Army, Dave? I did seven. Okay. And how many years do you serve in the Marines? Six. Six. Okay. Uh, now, this is not a competition, but I do want to know what this, uh, you know, friendly rivalry is between the Army and the Marines, because I didn't know about this before. That's all that it is. Yeah. Just a friendly rivalry. <laughs> it's just a friendly rivalry. <laughs> right. So going back to 1775. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's some smack talking yep. right off the bat. And oh, yeah. 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 So, I mean, you came in, you offered, you said if you would have knew that Manny was a Marine, you would have came in and brought crayons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What does that reference mean? Well, just Marines are cranny dudes, man. It's supposed to be a reference so that we don't think and that we're much. supposed to be dumb. Ah. But, but when we go to war, you know, we're the ones that are praised for our artwork. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. And what are some of the Marines' thoughts against the Army? And I'm not trying to start a civil war in between. I don't want to start a competition here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. hey, let's antagonize <laughs> each other a little bit on air. Come on. Well, I give the army its props. The army has all the resources and we get the hand me downs. So we're um, doing a whole lot less or a whole lot more with a lot less. Right. And, I, I can relate to that. Uh, Are know, we the Marines of morning shows? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Okay. You know, you keep See, you locked up in the broom closet, right? They keep us locked up, give us nothing and mm -hmm. then let us loose. Now we're wild <laughs> animals out in the street, you know? So it's yeah, relatable. I would say. I just judge both of them on whatever, whoever like has the better commercial from back in the day. The Marine commercials, when he has to look at the rock climbing guy with the eagle on top. Yeah. The Marines. Mm, that yeah. was the best. The Army usually has a cool like B-roll of helicopters and things like that too, but right. I judge on, on commercials. Well, there's a, you know, and of course, catchphrases. You got to judge them off catchphrases. The oh, yeah. For the few, the proud, the Marines. Right. That's a iconic catchphrase. And then Army of One, I think, right? Yeah, that's like the newer one. Yeah, yeah. What was the one that got you to say, I'm going to sign up for the Army? Because when you chose, Dave, and you had, you had to pick, right? And you, you decided to go with Army. What made you choose Ar Army? Well, so my uncle was a Marine and uh, I was actually born on November 10th, mm -hmm. which is Marine Corps birthday. Oh, nice. So Ooh. allegedly I was supposed to be a, a legacy and my dad actually served in the army. So that uh, was kind of, yeah, you went after you followed your father's footsteps instead of your uncle's footsteps. Pretty much. Yeah. Which makes sense. All right. And what made you choose to be a Marine, Manny? Try to make a long story short. My grandfather was in the army world war two. Okay. My father was army. He was with Panama. And uh, I was going to join the army following everyone's footsteps. Uh, one day after uh, football practice, I was a junior and uh, me and a buddy were arguing about who was better because he was going to join the Marines, which he ended up not joining at all. Um, <laughs> one of the seniors came the out dope. Yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. heard us arguing and asked if I was joining the Marines. And I said, no, I'm actually uh, going to join the army. want to be a ranger, this, that, and the other. And he said, oh, he's like, that's good. He's like, you never make it a Marine boot camp. And, oh, uh, oh, that's a challenge. That, that kind of pissed me off, and I went to the recruiter's office right after that. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. You I went guess. full I Goggins. Went, went and did it. Came back, found him, and uh, showed him after I had my uh, blues on. Knocked on his door and uh, told him I did it. Mm. You said I couldn't. I did it. 
Yeah. And he turned out to be a meth head afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said, jokes on you. I've been doing meth this whole time. So. <laughs> it's like, oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, cool, man. Totally forgot. <laughs> <laughs> What's the hardest part of the Marine Corps boot camp? And I'm going to ask Dave the same question about the Army boot camp. That you were, for you. Oh, I would have to say the hardest part for me was the constant mistakes. It didn't matter if you were right, you were always wrong. Mm. And uh, that immediate <laughs> teardown, it's it's culture shock right off the bat. Um, it's it's stress induced immediately, and there's no breaks in between. Um, you get in trouble for sleeping wrong, and it, it was just it was a wild ride. Being in the Marines sounds like being married, you know. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, so it's, yeah, it's a marriage trainer. Yeah. Same, simulation. Yeah. Same question for you, dude. No, I'd, I'd say that's probably about the same. You know, just you think you're doing something right and you're really not. And yeah. 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 I mean, it happens. And both of you deployed during the war? Uh, twice to Iraq, I did. Twice to Iraq. You did two tours in Iraq. And, and Dave, did you I do did one? You did one tour in Iraq as well? Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we could share war stories on the podcast broadcast, so we we'll keep things positive here. But, you know, the positive uh, side <laughs> uh, of all this is, of course, you know, uh, we love our veterans and our streamers alike and uh, the camaraderie, even amongst the, uh, you know, the what is it the saying I'm looking for? Um, camaraderie amongst the what's the when you God damn it. See, I'm blanking out. <laughs> it's I'm trying to help you out, brother. Yeah. yeah. I'm well, trying to help. Um. I know there's a word for it uh, when you're uh, you're like representing your team. Oh. Inter-service rivalry. I don't know. <laughs> I'll Ambassador. No, dude. A... Yeah. Hey, don't know, dude. Me. I'm trying to help you. Here. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> I, if you're gonna like fail on helping me, then I'm a no dude. You. But yeah, the com camaraderie. Blah blah blah. All right, we'll keep the conversation moving <laughs> off podcast broadcast. <laughs> I swear to God, you know what happened was I was looking at Manny like directly instead of looking at the screen. And that ring light blinded me. And now uh, I'm like completely mentally out. The camaraderie amongst the loyalty. Nope. Uh, the, uh, I'm not. I'm not here. Is it actually a saying? Or are you just trying to figure out a word? Yeah, dude. It's a saying or yeah, a word? Okay. Look, if you're a fanatic about, let's see. Brother in arms. Uh, first off, Dave, or, you, you're like uh, now a super loyal Roadrunners fan, right? Yes. Uh, what would you call that? Your dedication to the Roadrunners? I don't know. Fanboys. Dedication. Well, I wouldn't call you a fanboy, but yeah, yeah. The, uh, when when you're Fanatic. representing Fanatic. your team you against you know another team, I'm not playing the commercials till I figure this out. A loyalist. No, again, <laughs> you know, along those lines though. <sighs> Caller right? number nine. You can guess the word he's trying no. to say. We got <laughs> no, Rico. Camaraderie amongst the. Uh, damn it, where Todd? You could help me out on that. I'm, I'm again. We're not playing the commercials till we figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> My paycheck can wait until I get yeah. this. C yeah, come on, I got vets here. You guys—they taught you words in the Isn't military, the military well? saying. No, no, it's uh, <laughs> they taught us yes sir, no sir, and yeah. I sir. Yeah, go kill that. Go kill this. That's about it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you guys have uh, camaraderie amongst your own, uh, you know, loyalty. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> I'll figure it out during a commercial break. Come Find out what my brain is melting down on next. Beefy can presents. Don't go away. <laughs> Fuck. They all just feel bad now. They're just like, yeah, no, okay. Like, yeah, like for a second there, I thought this guy was uh, halfway fucking smart. And he's There's just parents out there saying, hey, go to school, go to college. <laughs> it's gonna bother this me. Is the prime school. reason it's gonna stay, stay in it's gonna school. bother me so much not knowing what you're trying <laughs> no to shit, say, dude. Because look, I'm having a brain fart as their uh, mech is pointing out, which is correct. All right, and I, I have a brain trust with me and three other brains to help me through this brain fart. We're all farting. And it's one, uh, one, uh, one big fart. The, so when you are, uh, you know, a loyalist to your team, you know, camaraderie amongst, uh, you know, like a fucking, and uh, you're die. die hard. Again, we're not doing slang. There's another word for it, um, a vocabulary word for it. Uh, so I hope it's going to be like 4 a.m. He texts me. I got it. <laughs> Yeah, and say you say a brotherhood. I mean, I guess I could go with brotherhood ten. Um, Band of brothers, not fanatic, because I wouldn't call it fanatic. You know, um, there's a camaraderie, which is a mutual respect uh, amongst the two different camps who are fucking, uh, you know, 100 percent loyal to those camps. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 
I, if you're auditioning for a co-host right now, you guys are failing. I need right. words. I need words. <laughs> words are hard. I know. I know. All right. Well, then I'm going to drop it. <sighs> camaraderie is just that you, I use the word. I mean, if, if I didn't want to use camaraderie twice, the camaraderie amongst the camaraderie doesn't work either. Honor amongst thieves. I'm telling you, it's because I stared at that ring light, dude, which don't do. You don't want to stare at it. So you didn't get injured by the sun, but you got injured by the ring light, and that's messing with your brain. <laughs> did you guys look Go at the figure. eclipse? I, uh, Manny, you did some posts. I didn't look at the eclipse. Yeah, uh, I was Dave? busy. I was at the VA hospital. I'm, I walk out, and it's all dim. I'm like, this is just weird. Yeah. But well, you've seen an eclipse before. How, right? Okay, here's a question. Yeah, the VA hospitals, what's the situation with those these days? Is it still as bad as they say it is? Slow. Slow. It's slow. Okay. Um, as things far as much service? Better. Things are much better than they were about 12 years ago. Yeah. Remember the um, nightmare stories? But uh, I'll say that uh, the VA here, uh, I would say 99% of the staff, awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesome. Great people. Cool. But that 1%, just a dick one? Yeah. Because <laughs> because hospitals are already oh looking at you Carl <laughs> hospitals are already bad enough on like the civilian side you know everybody has a bad complaint story but I'm just like if there's any hospital that should be up to par all the time it would be the VA but you got to think but of then, it this way uh -huh. it's the lowest bidder it is yeah sure. uh, <laughs> let me just put it this way I tore my shoulder about twelve weeks ago I finally get to go into surgery on freaking Friday. <laughs> Took them twelve weeks to get me scheduled. It's so MRI. sad in America. You look at that, you go, that's kind of reasonable. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I mean, and that no, is the horrible. benefit that, that you is... have benefits of at least healthcare uh, forever, right? Yeah. 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 Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, you have to wait for that, though, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I do want to take a moment to to celebrate and acknowledge uh, Rico's Nana's birthday. She turns ninety five. Ninety five on America. She's gonna ride a motorcycle today, I think. Is she really? Yeah, yeah. Who's her motorcycle? She went a ninety on her ninetieth. She went skydiving. Uh huh. And then ever since then, she's kind of been like on this like dopamine or <laughs> thrill seeker. What's the word I'm looking adrenaline. for? Adrenaline. Adrenaline. No, adrenaline. No, I'm not. High. Even if I know, the race, no, I'm not fucking I'm helping you, man. I was, <laughs> I was begging you guys, you know, uh, and I was hoping you guys are all heroes. I, I, yeah. I, well, I'm not Rico, but uh, I'm, I'm still considering. I worked in Old Navy once. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count all right well here's nana mary uh giving a little birthday shout out in return because she knew we were gonna say hey happy birthday uh, nana mary happy 95 years and hope you go 95 miles per hour on a motorcycle you think she would do that probably i, I got two at home Ooh. yeah yeah you're gonna you gonna ride with her in the back i want to get her a no, vest oh, that's Manny, that's i'll right. have my wife do it Oh, nice. She's already had her. She already has her Nana bandana, but okay. now she needs that metal, uh, the the leather jacket. The Nana bandana. There's a Nana bandana. You you have to sell that. that. Yeah, yeah, that's a wow. brand right there. Ooh. Uh, ninety five years, oh, and she's still so vibrant, has so much energy. Here's uh Nana Mary, uh, saying thank you for the well wishes. Ninety five, where is my song, you bitches? <laughs> ninety five. Where is my song, you bitches? I love this. I thought there was going to be an F-bomb. Um, so, in fact, actually, let me get that Metallica going. She wants to hear Metallica, not Creed? Yeah, she'll be happy with either, I think. If okay. you have some Nat King Cole, that might really get her, <laughs> nah, get her going. I mean, I've already but... messed with the ratings by A, forgetting <laughs> words, and B, playing whatever I want. So, um, since I've already forgotten words today, I'm not going to play whatever words I want. Words are hard. Yeah. <sighs> That's going to bug me for days until I figure it out later. I know the pain, but it's even text. worse not knowing the context you're going for. Thanks. Yeah. We're just like, what? I know. It's great. Uh, so here we go. Let's do this. Rock One 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. It's a very special day here on the program because Rico's owns a Nana, Nana Mary. Nana Mary. Is turning 95 years old today. 95. Yes. And to celebrate her birthday, what's she doing, Rico? She wants to hear some Metallica. Well, no, no, no. She, she wanted to hear Creed, but yeah, oh. she's going to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, I think she's going to ride a motorcycle today. She went skydiving in 90, but 95. She's like, I'm going to do a motorcycle next. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, you kind of reversed it. You should have done the motorcycle <laughs> first and then skydiving, but hey, <laughs> Adrenaline Nana. It works. Yeah, dude, which is great. And you'll be able to see a picture on uh, video of Nana Mary. Uh, so she wanted to hear uh, one of her favorite songs because she still rocks at 95 years old. And she, it, just like the Houston Astros, I believe, uh, loves Creed uh, and can you say <laughs> or my own prison right so uh, Nana, Nana Mary do you want me to play your request 95 where is my song you bitches oh I'm sorry here you go <laughs> Nana Mary <laughs> uh, so here's uh, my own prison by Creed and Rock 1 2.1 KFMA it's the podcast broadcast 
Ah, right, there we go. Uh, what a fantastic little video. Are you she kept, like, I'm like, Nana, how are you feeling? She's like, I'm in my own prison. I'm like, you must want to hear some Creed. <laughs> I'm <laughs> in my own prison. When you're 95. You love Creed, Nana. <laughs> Stop saying that. I'm in my own prison. <laughs> <laughs> what, you don't love me here? Come on. My arms are wide open and I'm in my own prison. <laughs> Take me higher. I'm like, Nana, what a Creed fanatic. Yeah. Alicia, uh, you know, she just wants to do a motorcycle ride, which is uh, fun and get an adrenaline rush. Imagine if she was like one of those grandparents who's like, all I want is some D, you know, for my birthday. <laughs> You're like, whoa. Whatever makes her happy. <laughs> Don't figure it out. Well, you know, if that was the case, we got 10. 10 would do it. And he said he hit that for free. What a champ. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. 10. He's got a fetish. Team player. <laughs> yeah. The fetish is wisdom. <laughs> The fetish is getting that student loan money paid off. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. I mean, you're getting written into a will. You know, so. <laughs> and not having to wait uh, more than a decade and a half. You know, honestly, I think she could be uh, one of those. Every week we kind of go through, uh, you know, people, the oldest people in the world kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I think we just had a guy who passed away at 115. 115? Yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, honestly, and the guys he drank every day and smoked and everything. And all she, he did say one of the keys to his longevity was taking a shot of liquor every <laughs> single day, just one shot, right? And uh, if you think about it, you know the way that you know alcohol was kind of like um, incorporated and utilized back in the day. It was a medicine, a hundred percent brandy. You know, all different types of uh, liqueur was just basically medicine. So he's, of course, when he was younger. Alcohol was medicine. Mm. I mean, he's 115 years old. So <laughs> you're talking drums. like 1920s <laughs> and they're just like, oh, yeah, you got yourself some AIDS here, huh? Take some Jack Daniels. There you go. <laughs> and that's a, a crude example. Uh, oh, and, you have ghosts in your blood? Here, do some cocaine do about some it. Cocaine about it yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, cocaine and I booze. Now, I don't think he was doing a line a day, but he did say a shot a day was his uh, secret uh, to longevity. And for that, you know, once I read that story, I busted out the Patron. And I was like, well, here's the longevity. Salute. Uh, you know. Loncha. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, that was tasty. Uh, here's the cut in that longevity story. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Ball to the dome. Mm. That's wild. I know. We're getting ready for the playoffs. Are you ready? Did you get your tickets already? Uh, my wife's supposed to be working on that right now. Nice. Yeah. Well, the, we're going to do the whiteout games, which is always uh, a fun time. Uh, and we're we got two more home stands, and hopefully we wrap it up with some dubs there and secure home games for the playoffs. And then if we're doing playoffs, home games, whiteout. If you watch this stream on a regular basis and you haven't been out to a game, now's the time, dude. No yeah. slacking. Uh, you know, Dave came out and then instantly was hooked. Uh, and you, you've been, you know, uh, a fanatic of, from like day one. You've been doing a lot of these paintings as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you did player paintings too, or uh, yeah, I've done a couple. Uh, given one out to Montana Oni Bucci, and I uh, just did one for Curtis Douglas. So I'm nice. hoping to hook him up. Hell yeah, dude! Yeah, and this has been a form of your uh, therapy as far as PTSD, and you've been taking this time to like you know paint to just concentrate on this. Yeah, and yeah, like it's almost like a meditation of sorts, huh? Uh, yeah, my wife, my wife last night's like. You're doing so much artwork, uh, you're not doing any housework. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, like therapy, baby. I uh, mean, mopping is I not therapy. This? No, I use my shoulder as an excuse. I'm like, oh, babe, I'm going to be down for a couple months. Yeah, you know, Just trying to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're painting with your good shoulder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to play it up every time. Yeah, that, is, <sighs> that is too funny. You give me an inch, I'm taking a mile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, you know, she gets creative with it. You know, she can make cleaning turning into painting or something. You know what I mean? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't. That's that's as far as my ideas go, because obviously, you know, uh, I'm an idiot and can't come up with words. So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. There was. Uh, should I tell you this weird story of a woman who married a doll? Which I've done stories like this before. These are always weird. These are weird, you know. And this one has kids. I'll tell you this story. Let's do it. Here. Like okay. a doll has do kids. Or she has kids. Um, she, well, she has kids with the doll, obviously, you know, that's how obviously, it works. yeah, <laughs> you know, that's how it works. I'll, I'll pull up photos of her so you can see 
Rock One Two Point One KF Man, welcome back to Be Vegan Presents. Uh, hanging out here with OG Streamer One Manny, uh, and then uh, we got uh, now Dave. We got to give you a number. It's uh, been forever uh, since you've been on the stream. Uh, but Redbeard Dave, our streamer as well, both vets uh, joining us live on the podcast broadcast, and of course Rico, uh, who feigned being flat-footed to get out of the service. But let me get into a weird story here. <laughs> there are spurs, whatever the ankle spurs, whatever. They, yeah, you know, bone, bone, spurs. bone, bone spurs. spurs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it You're right. right. And, uh, at least I had a valid excuse to be in a felon. <laughs> and they said, not the today, son. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I tried. I tried, you know, um, after the fact, you know, thanks to 9-11. I was all, like, super spirited. What made you, besides, you know, going through high school, you were just like, I, I want to do this as a, a possible, you know, a future path to grow as a man? Or was it something that, you know, kind of got you saying, oh, I need to fight for my country? I enlisted before 9-11. Oh, you did? Yeah. And then when 9-11 happened, we were like, damn it, man, we're going to go to war. I thought this was going to be like a buffet and just trips around the country. No, that's why I joined the Marines. <laughs> oh, so you were stoked. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Yep. Yeah. What about you, Dave? Uh, no, as soon as 9-11 happened, I was like, all right, this is going down. So Yeah, that's right. So, I, you know, I was uh, like-minded. Of course, you know, when that happened, you know, a lot of people, uh, I mean, obviously enlistment spiked through the roof. And there was a retaliation of sorts, a uh, mentality that a lot of Americans had. Uh, and then I went through. And so, I mean, Pat Tillman was one of those oh, yeah. uh, legendary heroes uh, that signed up because of that. Uh, I was going to try to be like one of those uh, guys. I went down to the recruitment office and I was like, here's my situation. Uh, is there any work around? And they're just like, mm, nah, get to the back of the line. We got too many people. I'm sure if I would have like tried to enlist beforehand on 9-11, then maybe they would have been able to figure something out. But I, I really think it was supply and demand at that point. And they're just like, no, no, there's, it's just going to be too much of a hassle. And there's a long line behind you. So, yeah, there are waivers. So right, yeah. recruiters, when they need to make mission, mm -hmm. there are waivers. Right. Well, now's the you time, know. man. Uh, numbers are down. I was right? going to say, now you can sneak in. <laughs> yeah. You know, that bone spur just worked. Out. <laughs> <laughs> came out of nowhere. They have these bone spurs. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to pull up this uh, story where I can show you pictures of the woman who married a six foot tall doll. And I'll tell you about her, but then I, I clicked on that link and I got pictures of the conjoined twins again, which again, I can't escape the story of these conjoined oh. twins who got married. <laughs> I know, I know, because you know what? The internet is a perverted place and immediately uh, there's so many amounts of people out there and dudes out there that think threesome that stories like this continue to populate in the algorithm. Uh, but the story that I wanted to share with you, our weird story today is a woman known for marrying a zombie doll who expanded her unconventional family by marrying another doll in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. Way to make it complicated. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, she could do that. And she took a page out of Weirdo's book. Her name's Felicity. She's 25 years old. That's a pretty young age to say, you know what? I'm going to do dolls from here on out. <laughs> uh, she identifies as an objectum sexual. That's a new one to look up. Let me add that to my book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ob Objectum sexual. And she says she feels a spiritual connection with two dolls that she met online. There's another thing. Like, was it Amazon <laughs> that she met them online? I got questions. Uh, uh, as for the husband dolls, Kelly and Robert uh, feel about the throuple. They asked, you know, they asked Felicity, like, well, what do your husbands feel about this? Uh, besides the obvious answer is nothing because they're inanimate, but Kelly or Felicity said Kelly feels fine about uh, her being with Robert because Robert and Kelly are like good best friends. No, oh, man. They're like brothers. Eskimo style. Now, the wedding attended by her doll children uh, it featured her <laughs> uh, grandfather leading the ceremony, breaking tradition with a red dress. Oh, it's the scandal. <laughs> and uh, she embraced her unique relationship dynamics, expressing hopes of reducing societal judgments uh, towards objectum sexuality. Uh, which, if you were trying to be judgmental, shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah. Uh, despite this criticism, Felicity said that she also liked to put out there that she is in therapy and her therapist sees nothing wrong with her loving her doll family. Is her therapist a doll too? Probably. <laughs> Someone look into this. It would save yeah, her a ton, questions. a ton of money. Yes. Uh, but our word of the day, which, of course, obviously I couldn't come up with words, but the phrase of the day is objectum sexual. Uh, so, yes, that is a thing. Uh, and, you know, Felicity is in a very happy relationship with her husbands, Kelly and Robert, and needed two dolls to handle the business. And I'm telling you, Friday nights get crazy 
at Felicity's oh, house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I want to say kudos to both the dolls, Robert and Kelly, for stepping up and being fathers to uh, Felicity's 11 doll children because, you know, that's a massive responsibility and it takes a man uh, to be a stepfather to a clan <laughs> of that size. That's a fact. Props. Not all heroes wear capes. Exactly. Yeah. Some of them wear like <laughs> price tags because they're friggin' dolls. Made in China. <laughs> this was sponsored by Energizer, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. Your beef tip coming up after these words. Jesus Christ. I know. So does that make all women objective sexuals? I mean, um, no, hmm, not necessarily. Yeah. No, because, yeah. you know, if you're talking about just the, the vibrators. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but that's a tool. That's not necessarily, um, you know, the thing that they're attracted to. They're they're satisfied with the results the tool provides. Hmm. Uh, but I don't think they look at it being like, oh, yeah, that bullet is so sexy. Ooh, you right, know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. She, she might have the last laugh in like 10 years when we're all doing the sex robot thing. Oh yeah, right. Well, sex robots—that's a whole different, uh, you know, ballpark and a tax bracket. And <laughs> tax that, bracket. Well, I'm telling <laughs> yeah. you, like people are getting there. The the, the more they, are, especially with AI, uh, they are pushing that medium forward, and um, you're gonna see a, a whole generation True. of people, especially men, being like, you know what, fuck it. I, I tried and it's enough. And I'm, uh, I'm until the AI gets that good where it becomes like legitimately too realistic or they start nagging. <laughs> like, I don't gotta make it down to version one, not three. If you could, if you're able to reprogram it, but honestly, you know, they're gonna get to a point where, you know, it's interactive and, you know, you'll be able to customize it to your specifics. And, and there'll be a lot of people not leaving their house, you know, in the future, I could see. Uh, so <laughs> as if it's different now. Mm. <laughs> it's got a quick kill. Did Amazon giant. start that? <laughs> oh God! Amazon start to what? Not leaving no, the house? Yeah, not leaving the house. Not having to go shopping. Not having to do any of that. Well, you got DoorDash, and now you're just gonna have like sex doll delivery. So I yeah, still, there's no reasons to leave the house. Are you doing DoorDash still? You guys doing Uber Eats and all that all the time? You know what though, I am. But unfortunately, I keep seeing more and more horrific stories about DoorDash. Where I'm, just yeah, like, yeah, uh, just delivery services in general. Mm -hmm. uh, John Oliver just did a piece on this. And talking about, you know, the uh, again, the biggest question about these delivery apps is how they make money. And because I did a restaurant delivery business with my friend back in college and the way that we made money uh, still only had us barely get by. And there was a lot of legality involved, including insurance and things like that. This is before apps. This is like way before this before apps. Yeah. They would pick up the phone. Uh, you know, we basically handed out menus all over Flagstaff. They would call us. We would call into the restaurant, place the order, then go pick up the order, then deliver the order. Yeah. At the end of the week, we would get an overall discount of how much food we ordered and would pay out. Right. And that's how we made money. Mm -hmm. Plus slate up charges and delivery fees. That's right of the curve. Yeah, well, that was my boy, uh, Cordy. Cordy mm -hmm. was all over it. Too. He's a very smart kid. Uh, but He was the Ben Affleck. You were the Mad Damon? Yeah, dude. I was uh, <laughs> vice versa. Yeah, I mean, I, I was there. Yeah, it was vice versa. I was there in support <laughs> and, and work. And, uh, you know, um, but he was definitely, it was his brainchild. Now, with that said, though, it was not easy. And eventually, you know, went under because it is a very difficult business model to maintain. And even with not paying proper insurance, delivery drivers would have to pay with doing this app. It was still a big major question mark how Uber Eats and DoorDash continue to thrive. And the answer is they are continuing to lose money, continuing. And essentially, it's startup business. So their business model right now, much like Uber, is lose money, lose money, lose money, become the new norm, and then jack up all the prices, mm -hmm. screw the consumer. Right. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're, they're not checking out the prices yet, uh, but also the small businesses and the restaurants that it has been involved in. Uh, they've been screwing over them as well. So it just seems like it's getting to a point where the question is, is it unethical or moral? Not, a, not immoral, unethical to order through these delivery apps. Mm. Right. Or just go directly to restaurants that actually have delivery drivers. It feels like everything nowadays that has to do with app usage or anything technically convenient that's turning to a dark side now is bringing us back to like st step one, like right. go back to the normal way. You know, we're like, yeah, just go to the restaurant. You know, some places that had delivery don't have it anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah. Be because like, they, they, they start, yeah. They started going with DoorDash or right. one of those. Right. Yeah, I know. And because it became the cheaper option, but at the end of the day, maybe they'll flip eventually because uh, A, there might not be consistency. It could be a bad rep. 
Uh, and then B, they might find out that it just isn't worth it to deal with DoorDash and lose so much money because DoorDash kind of sets these, uh, like we would say, 25 to 30% discount would be a good rate for us, right? Uh, which restaurants were more than happy to oblige. Some, you know, tried to argue it and make like 10%. Rock One 2.1 KFMA, we're talking about DoorDash and the John Oliver piece and how it works out. But, uh, you know, with that said, the way that it was revealed in this piece, is that these restaurants weren't doing uh, 25, 30%, which they can maintain and still make a profit. Uh, like these apps were kind of making them do uh, 50 to 60% off. Mm -hmm. So then at the same time, it's like, wait a second, you're cutting into our cost. And now the restaurants were losing money mm -hmm. uh, and they weren't getting pandemic level business uh, from everybody ordering consistently. Uh, and a lot of these relationships were forged 100% because of the pandemic right, because right. they couldn't have people sitting in a restaurant. So fascinating Oof. stuff. I know. Uh, well, we're not going to end on a heavy note like that. Uh, unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for the show. Obviously, I'd like to thank everyone for listening and uh, Dave and Manny for coming in and hanging out with us. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll continue to give away uh, tickets and I'll have a pair of tickets to give away here uh, in a moment. But first, let me give you a beef tip. Uh, are your kids spoiled? That's the big question, right? Uh, and so here are some signs that your kids may be spoiled. Uh, let's see. They say you have to bribe them to do stuff. If you have to bribe your kids to do stuff, you're raising spoiled children. Uh, they, if they're sore losers, oh, that's the worst, right? If they're sore losers, there's a good chance your kid might be spoiled. Uh, if they demand things now, woo! I would dare my daughter to demand <laughs> things now. Try me. Yes, but if your kids are demanding things now, that's a sign that your kids are spoiled. Uh, if they think the world revolves around them, that's a sign their uh, kids are spoiled. If they're never satisfied with what they have, that's a sign uh, your kids are spoiled. And finally, you tell them no, and they throw a tantrum. That's a sign your kids are spoiled. I think now, I'm doing all right. Yeah, if, you're, if your kids are toddlers, the, you still have time to get them out of that, and it's excusable. If these kids are 10 or above and they're doing all these things, you got to check yourself because if not, you're going to continue to be victimized by your own children for the rest of your Change life. Change that Wi-Fi password immediately. Yeah, you <laughs> raised a bunch of spoiled little bitches. And this society doesn't need any more uh, spoiled little bitches. Yeah. We have enough viral videos uh, from Karens all over the world each and every day. Uh, so watch out for those here. signs is my beef tip to you. I uh, We have a pair of tickets to give away for the Bad Friends Comedy Show. You want to go to that show? Call our number 10 right now, 600 KFMA, 605-362. That's all the time we have. Thank you for listening. Drive safe, ride safe, and as always, rock roll. When you Camaraderie wish from Bosky, the beef, words, 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 words,